Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. Have you ever heard about something in history that's like so old or so out of place that it makes you question your whole relationship with time? I feel like that happens to me a lot when I look at an event and compare it with events of that same time. And you're like, those happened around the same time? It could definitely change and mess with your perspective. And it looks like that's what this video is going to be talking about. So I came across this video from a small channel, but it has kind of gone viral in the last couple of weeks. So I'm hoping there's something to it here. The channel is called Just Casual. And the video is simply called Historical Facts That Mess With Your Sense of Time. All right, I'm excited to check this out and give you my perspective and add some history to it. Let's get started. Just casual. This video is linked down below. Make sure you support it. New, new, uh, when we try to put creator. historical events into perspective, we often simplistically divide things into old days and modern times because our brains can often struggle with the perception of time. Looks like another uh, Salmonella influence. You know, you see with the uh, animation style and all that, man, that channel has been influential. So many things, you know, oversimplified obviously has been huge. And I would say Salmonella have had the most influence as far as people making new channels that like to um, mimic their style. It's like watching history. <laughs> I compiled a series of interesting facts on historical events that surprisingly took place at more or less the same time, okay. turning them into real and pretty fascinating coincidences Darth Vader was around and will make you think twice about how you perceive the past. Number one, the same tortoise belonged to both Charles Darwin and Steve Irwin. Oh yeah, I think I've heard of this guy. Tortoises live forever. Didn't they live to be like 150? Harriet the tortoise was reportedly collected by Charles Darwin during his 1835 visit to the Galapagos Islands as part <laughs> of his round the world survey expedition. Then she was transported On to the England Beagle? and finally brought to her final home, Australia, wow. by a retiring captain of the Beagle, the ship Darwin used for his expedition. And mm -hmm. as we all know, tortoises can live quite a long time. And by a hilarious turn of events, Harriet turned up in Steve Irwin's zoo. That's right. The pet tortoise of Charles Darwin was adopted by the legendary crocodile hunter. To be honest, that would However, be pretty cool to have. some doubt was cast on this story by the fact that Darwin had never visited the island that Harriet originally came from. Anyhow, she uh, had an estimated age of 175 by. by the time she finally died at Steve Irwin's zoo. Her life was an absolute win since Harriet got to meet two historical legends. Number two, what else can live that long? I know they say like jellyfish are like eternal, right? But what are some other animals that can live like that long or longer? It's at 175. It most, most don't even come close to that. Today's oldest living tree was already 1,000 years old when the last woolly mammoth died. Damn, the world's nature. oldest tree is a Great Basin bristlecone pine located in White Mountains, California, and is dated at around 5,000 years old. Wow. To put that into perspective, isolated populations of woolly <laughs> mammoths on Wrangell <laughs> Island didn't finally go extinct until 4,000 years ago. Mm. With the small island in the Arctic Ocean serving as a sanctuary for the great beasts after they were forced from the mainland by humans and climate change. Aww. So you don't have to go back to the ice Rip. age to meet some mammoth friends. Number three, woolly okay. mammoths and the... Okay, so yeah, we're seeing uh, that with the trees. And I like the redwoods, right, are enormous and crazy old. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Egyptians. I think this fact is right. more popular nowadays, Egypt and but I still there we want go. to include it since it's a true classic. This is the stuff I, I wanted to see. established earlier, woolly mammoths went extinct about 4,000 years ago okay. when human yeah. societies were Egyptians already Egyptians are about 5,000 at least. The oldest of the great pyramids over 5, in Egypt, years. the Pyramid of Djoser, was constructed about 1,000 years before they went the old extinct. step pyramids, Meaning though. that while man was busy building some of the most incredible structures ever made, woolly mammoths were still chilling on some islands. Number four. Yeah, so it, it kind of seems like woolly mammoths are some of the, the last survivors of the end of the last kind of ice age, around 10,000 BC or so when it's kind of been wrapped up um, because uh, there are so many animals, right? When it was colder, there are these big, huge, furry animals that lived in northern climates. Um, it's actually a big reason why you start to see the populating of the, uh, of the Americas coming across the Bering Strait was uh, nomadic people hunting some of those big animals up there and then eventually coming across and then coming down through the Americas. Um, but then once that 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 ice age basically finished off, you know, it cuts off the Americas and then you get populating 
further and further south down the Americas. So amazing how humanity's history is also tied to these climate effects and also um, these, you know, the lifespans of of species, right? Especially in the hunter gatherer time, go where the pe- or go where the hunting is, where the animals are. All right, Gandhi and Jack the Ripper. Oh, really? Gandhi's birth? Because Jack the Ripper, his actual ripping was Mahatma Gandhi decades before and that. Jack the Ripper. Gandhi is so bound up with the Titanic events of the 20th century. But he did live in India that it or might in be London. Peculiar to imagine him as a dapper gentleman of Victorian society. He was. But that's exactly what he became while yeah. studying law in London. So. So the kind of the deal with that is this actually can kind of we can use this to learn about how India ruled Britain or sorry, how Britain ruled India. Um, The British like to rule things indirectly when possible. And although things change after the Sepoy Rebellion and the, the you know, the crown took over, it enhanced that. But um, one of the ideas was that, you know, people that in India that kind of worked for the British, you're right. Um, you have sepoys, of course, who served in the military and these other officials that work for that. One of the advantages for that, for like being Indian, working for like the British, like um, or at least working for the the state was like with 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 Gandhi's uh, father was that your children are going to have access to educational opportunities. And Gandhi was one of those. He got to go to law school, prestigious law school in London. Um, and yeah, got to be a student there. He ends up getting his law degree and actually starts practicing law actually in South Africa, which is part of the kind of the British empire, if you want to call it back then, um, influence. And then interestingly, and I guess in a turn of events, use those same, that same education to fight for independence from Britain. <laughs> Arriving in September, 1888 right in the midst of the Jack the Ripper killings. Dang. Gandhi obviously had nothing to do with the Jack the Ripper do we killings, know? but it's funny to think about the fact that Gandhi could have become a Gandhi suspect the in the most famous hey. murder case. Hey, we know about we know about Gandhi in civilization, right? Nuclear Gandhi is how he's super aggressive in the civilization games. Number Nintendo five. and Jack Nintendo the Ripper. Nintendo's Jack old the Ripper. from the 1800s. Even though Jack right. the Ripper and Nintendo were around about the same time, he never got the chance to play classics like Zelda and Mario. Maybe he wouldn't they have killed people. originally made then. playing cards called Hanafuda when yeah. the company was founded way back in 1889. At the same time, the infamous Jack the Ripper was creating havoc on the streets of London. Music. His murder spree happened only about a year before Nintendo came into existence. Number six. We're using Star- we're using Jack the Ripper as our like <laughs> our reference to time so much. Star Wars came out the same year as the last guillotine execution in France. Yeah, in the seventies. Um, in fact, it was the last uh, I believe execution in France at all. Um, they don't do um, capital punishment, and the guillotine was the yeah, the last thing they ever used too. So, I mean, if you're gonna get the death penalty, I mean, the guillotine you could do a lot worse than that. Star Wars came out the same year as the last guillotine execution in France. When thinking about guillotine executions, our minds wander to historic figures like Napoleon. But you didn't have to be that old to get your head chopped off. Star Wars premiered in the United States on May 20th, 1977. At the same time, this futuristic (laughs) sci-fi was wowing audiences around the world. Hamida, the pimp killer, Jandubi was what? headed for the torture and murder of a young woman. This was oh, the last use nice. of the guillotine in France. Nobody else has been executed using any means since. Considering the timeline, even your own grandpa could have attended this last execution. And maybe he talked with some strangers about the new cool Star Wars movie while watching the execution. Oh gosh, is it like part of your date? You go to the execution, because it was done like publicly, right? Um, that's part of your date night, you go... First thing we're going to do, honey, is we're going to go watch this, what was it, murderer, whatever, get his head chopped off, and then we'll go to Star Wars. Number seven. Prisoners arrived at Auschwitz just days after McDonald's was founded. Mm. While McDonald's is traditionally associated with the good times and affluence of 1950s America, the very first restaurant was opened much earlier on May 15th, 1940. At the same time, one of the most gruesome events in human history began in Europe. Just five days after McDonald's grand opening, the first prisoners arrived at the Auschwitz concentration camp in what is now Poland. Number eight. Oxford University existed for hundreds of years before the Aztec Empire was founded. Yeah, Oxford, the old, one of the oldest. I think the oldest uh, oldest um, university still functioning, I think, is in, um, in Italy. Is it Bologna, I think? But Oxford is right up there. So, yeah, with the Aztecs, um, they were founded in 
13, 1400s, so. The Aztec Empire began as an alliance of three city-states. These three city-states ruled the area in and around the Valley of Mexico from 1428. This came to an end when the combined forces of the Spanish conquistadors mm. and their native allies under Hernan Cortes defeated them in 1521. By the way, just did a commentary reaction video to Armchair Historian's really good video on the fall of the Aztecs just a few days ago. Check that out if you want to hear more from this and hear more from me on it. Aztec culture had rich and complex mythological and religious traditions, as mm -hmm. well as achieving remarkable architectural and artistic accomplishments. Yeah. Without the technologies of Eurasia, right? Um, no work animals, no uh, metal tools, um, it, basically in, a, in an environment that, well, if you know about ten, um, uh, Tenochtitlan, it's an, it's an, an island, uh, which was terrible geographically, but served their purposes and also has a founding myth to it uh, that you can check out in my other videos. But yeah, um, super impressive given what they had to deal with. Meanwhile, in England, Oxford University was already well established. It has no known date of foundation, but there is evidence of teaching as far back as 1096, mm. making it the oldest university in the English speaking world and the world's second oldest university in continuous operation. It grew rapidly. I think Bologna's from first. Right? when Henry II banned English students from attending the University of Paris. So part of why Oxford is so famous today is because Henry pulled a clever marketing move. Number nine, ecstasy <laughs> was invented the same year the Titanic sank. Oh, geez. The unsinkable Titanic sank in 1912. Going down in the North Atlantic We're Jack and Rose four using. days into the ship's maiden voyage from Southampton to New York City. In the same year, pharmaceutical giant Merck was interested in developing substances that stopped abnormal bleeding. See, this is back when th there was no like FDA, basically. And this is when they would treat illnesses or anything with just whatever. Like, and 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 so much of it now we have names for it, but horrible stuff they, like LSD, and cocaine and like uh, all the, these things that were like horrible and they would, would market them as like wonder tonics and stuff. You know, your door-to-door uh, -door salesman grifter was doing this. Just horrible products. One of their chemists, Anton Kolisch, synthesized MDMA to avoid a patent by German rival Bayer. It wasn't until 1975 that psychoactive effects of the drug began to be taken seriously and recreational use spread thereafter through personal networks of psychotherapists, psychiatrists, users of psychedelics and yuppies. So you know, it's hard. You, you have to don't think of people back in the old times as like drug addicts. You think it's like a modern thing when it's just not the case at all. Maybe, you you know, you thought of like opium, with opium trade and stuff like in China and, 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 and whatever. But it was a I mean, again, turn of the century global phenomenon because such little regulation and understanding of all these horribly detrimental products to your health oh so, yes everyone who died on the titanic never got the chance to taste this drug by the <laughs> way ecstasy raised one's body temperature so if it had been invented earlier it might explain why the captain was so desperate to ram an iceberg oh, number gosh. 10 microsoft was founded while spain was still a fascist that's dictator. interesting that's interesting to think about because you think of spanish you know, people often just think of fascism. It just like died with World War II. Remember, Spain was not involved in World War II, not, you know, directly, whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, with Franco and stuff, they're dealing with their civil war and all that. But yeah, Spain, it goes on a lot longer. controversial figure within Spain, Franco is seen as a divisive leader. Supporters credit his strong anti-communist and yeah. nationalist views, economic policies, preservation of traditional Spanish practices, and support of the monarchy of Spain as positive influences over the nation. Critics despair him as an autocratic dictator who violently suppressed opposition and dissent, banned culture seen as non-Spanish, and provided much support to the Axis powers during World War II. Franco ruled Spain as a fascist state up until his death in 1975. This was the same year that Microsoft was founded by Paul Allen and Bill Gates, and the beginning of a new era in computer technology. Interesting. Number 11. I didn't think of those two Potter together. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows was published the same year the first iPhone was released. So this is not a big deal because I was very much of mature age by the time this all happened. So I don't know. Is this weird to you guys? The seventh and last book in the Harry Potter series. Like, like which one did you think was older? Harry Potter or the iPhone? Released in 2007. 
ending the series that began in 1997 with the publication of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. That same year, something came along that has probably done more to kill children's interest in reading more than anything else. <laughs> the first Smartphones. iPhone model. Considering that the first Pretty iPhone much. seems like a vintage phone Kids now, read anymore? It's impressive I can't get them to read in class. By. But that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. This was Just Casual, and I'm standing right behind you. All right, final thoughts. All right, good to have a timeline check there. Um, it's always interesting to to do that because we we have a hard time sometimes, I think, understanding timelines in the fact that there are multiple timelines in history. You like to think of timelines of one of one timeline from like ancient to present that largely follows one like region. But like timelines are there's a bunch of parallel ones and studying the connections between those are really fascinating to really get a, a good understanding of the world and world history. Um, I try to do that and be like, hey, this is going, you know, when I teach a unit, try to like do like a world tour of what, everything that was going on within that time period. And then you can get a better sense of, again, what things were going on so you can think globally that way. And it's it always interesting when you drop some of these these things that it can mess with that, that part of your uh, of your sense of time. So, all right, great job there. All right. Again, this video is linked down below. Um, this channel has just uh, has 21,000 subscriber or 21. Yeah, 21,000 subscribers called Just Casual. Get that up if we uh, like what what's going on here. So this is very entertaining. And with that, we'll see you all next time.